Stoke Trister is a village and civil parish two miles southeast of Wickenton and five miles northwest of Gillingham, close to the Dorset border in southeast Somerset. The settlement had a recorded population of 23 households in 1086, making it part of the largest 40% of settlements in the Doomsday Inquest. Count Robert of Mortain, the half-brother of William the Conqueror, was the tenant-in-chief in 1086. Bredel St. Clair was the lord of that land in 1086, along with several others. It's of interest to us because Bredel went from owning one land holding in 1066 to 25 after the conquest. His lands would have kept him very busy. They were spread over 155 miles wide, as far east as Wareham, as far north as Bruton, and far west of Plymouth in Cornwall. I've read that the king and his tenants and chiefs spread those landholding lords out over great distances on purpose to keep their lords busy with land matters rather than stirring up trouble. As you'll read in the accompanying blog post, there was a sudden change in ownership of Stoke Trister. This is from KSB Keats Rohan's tremendous resource, Doomsday Descendants, a prosopography of persons occurring in English documents 1066 to 1166. I'm always looking for affinity groupings, different last names within the same families, or marriages between families. But this one threw me. I'm going to read this and point out something. De Sancto Clara, William, occurs in the Pipe Roll, 1129 through 30, Dorset and Wiltshire. Apparently successor, perhaps son of Bredel de St. Clair in the barony of Stoke Trister, held of Robert de Mortain in 1086, perhaps the same as William who occurs on the Pipe Rolls 1164 to 65, possibly father of Philip de St. Clair and of Walter de Esselega, or Ashley, who held the barony of Stoke Trister in 1166. So basically what's happening here is at this writing, KSB Keats Rohan believed that this was a name change, that, Ash, that Walter de Ashley was possibly the brother or son of Philip de St. Clair. Fascinating. It really threw me for a loop. I got very excited about it, but stay with me. Luckily, the Reverend E.H. Bass contributed a paper to the Proceedings of the Somersetshire Archaeological and Natural History Society entitled The Family of Dirtaco. He pointed out the Bruton Cartulary mention of Walter de Asselega and his wife Felicia, no maiden name mentioned there on Felicia, who gave to the canons of Bruton all the land they had at Montacute, Bruton, and Langport, and more. And here's the kicker, all of which pertain to the inheritance of the said Felicia, It's difficult to argue with the cartulary. This makes it almost certain that Felicia was Bredel St. Clair's daughter and that Walter S. Alega benefited from her inheritance. (music) British History Online says there was a church at Stoke by 1225. It was described as a chapel in 1317 and 1344 perhaps because there seems to have been a separate chapel at Bayford, whose priest was referred to in the 13th century and in 1343. The current owner of Stoke Trister, Tim McGraw, no relation to the uh, country music singer, was showing us around the grounds and pointing to what might have been foundation stones close to the manor house, thinking that this was where the church was. Tim just showed us this. This is, this wall is very thick. You can see it actually bumps back here. It comes this way, it bumps back, it goes there, it bumps out again. I think it's probably the nave of the uh, church. Is that the right phrase, nave? Did you say nave? The nave of the church? It's where the altar was. The altar, it's where the altar was. Upon checking it out pretty thoroughly, The lack of cement holding those stones together convinced me that these low walls are much more modern.
The Google Earth view of the field above Stoke Trister shows that a farmer has not plowed over something in the very middle of his field. To me, this looks very much like it was at one time a church. You can definitely see some walls still standing from the uh, Google Earth view. Enjoy the blog post on Stoke Trister and keep an eye out for the next research post from our trip to England. By the way, I'm planning to go back this coming summer.